All right, as much as I love Adele, it's time to say goodbye to chasing payments, not pavements. It's okay, I think she'll be okay with that slight modification. Basically what we're getting at people is to get paid before you do the work. Yes, you are worth it and yes, you can. Stick with me, we're gonna go over all the details. Welcome, I'm Sandra Funk and this is Design Sips, where we'll raise a glass and think tank how to bring more joy, balance, and abundance to your interior design firm. Now let's dig into your questions. Cheers. 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 Alrighty, Tony asks, Sandra, I love the idea of being paid up front in full, but I feel like my clients will think I'm nuts. How do you get your clients on board? So your clients won't think you're nuts because it's your business and it's how you run your business. So it is as simple as setting up that precedent right from the beginning and simply demonstrating that that's how you work. It's the same way that when you go into some restaurants and you sit at the table and you order your food with a waitress and the food comes and you pay at the end. And then you go into some restaurants and you order at a counter and you pay right then and then you go sit down with your food or maybe you take a number to the table and the food gets delivered. Some businesses do it one way and some businesses, some businesses do it another way. Your choice, you're the business and you get to choose. Do you take payment before you deliver the goods or after? Again, it's done different in different businesses as long as you communicate it clearly the choice is entirely yours. Absolutely. So in our experience, we've collected up front. You've done it both ways, but you this is how you do it now. Um, and we find that high-end luxury design clients love this way. They love it because when you take payment up front, that means you have to calculate a flat fee, right? We can't take hourly payment up front because we don't know how many hours we've worked yet. So we have to figure out flat fees and there's a very simple direct way to do that. But once you have your flat fees figured out and can communicate them to your client at the very beginning of the project, the clients love this. They are obsessed with knowing exactly what this project is going to cost them before they get involved in this project. As you know, most of our work makes the space worse before it gets better and the absolute fear of design clients is that they will run out of money before the project is complete. With a flat fee, that's not possible, right? We define the scope, we are clear on what we're doing, and we know how much it's gonna cost up front. And at that time, they pay in full, they get their design, we execute the project. It's a beautiful process. Absolutely, and if you show them the numbers and it scares them away, better to find out before. Oh my goodness, yes. So listen, when you do a flat fee and you figure out what your design fees need to be as well as your project budget to execute the design, when you have that knowledge up front and you're able to communicate it with a potential client, if that client actually does not value your services to that amount of money, doesn't, want, doesn't value doing the project for that amount of money, or simply doesn't have that amount of money to spend, right? They either decide they don't value it or they don't even have it. You want to know that as soon as possible. You do not want to gut their kitchen and then find out that they are out of cash. Trust me, I have been there. It is not pretty, guys, okay? And as much as you tell me, but I gave them an estimate of hours and they can obviously multiply my hourly rate times my estimate of hours, I am telling you, I worked this way for years and somehow, some way, that number just doesn't belong to them. The way that having to pay up front hits them and resonates with them. Somehow over the years of charging hourly, even with an estimate of hours, my design clients were often confused and didn't understand that that would actually be the total at the end of the project and continually asked me, are we done yet? How much longer am I gonna get any of these time bills? Why am I getting invoices still for your time when I haven't seen you in weeks? Because of course in purchasing, we're still working away, following up on open orders, but they don't see us on the job site. They don't see us in meetings, right? All that justification, all that communication, all that strife is poof, gone when you price your services upfront. It's got so many benefits in addition to 
just being able to be done with the accounting in one foul swoop. Right, right. Is this something you would do with clients in the middle of working with them, just switch the way that you would charge? Oh, hell no. No, no, no. That's the thing, you guys. This has to be set up from the potential client standpoint. It has to be part of what you do and how you do it from the very beginning, right? It cannot be something that you do on the fly, off the cuff, or spring on somebody halfway through the conversation. Um, in addition, when you have a client that's returning, right? Say you have done projects for someone and they're coming back and you're switching gears from hourly to a flat fee. There is such a beautiful way to make this transition. And I did this personally with my clients when I was making this transition. I have a beautiful email template that walks you through this word for word inside the standard. Come check it out if you're interested in addition to learning exactly how to calculate these flat fees. But basically what I said to these clients is, I'm so thrilled to be doing another project with you. I'm so honored that you called me back into your home again. And I wanted to share with you, I've really been listening to my clients and what they want and need. And with that, taking that input in, I have made a huge positive change in my company and am now able to price my projects in full up front so that you can fully understand the financial obligations prior to deciding to take on the next project that we worked on together. Does that sound good to you? And they're like, of course that sounds good to me. I can have the total of what I need to spend in my hot little hand to go back to my accountant, bank account, partner, decision-making team and say, okay, it's going to be 150,000. Are we up for this? Do we want to do these rooms for this amount of money in this timeline? This is empowering your clients with the knowledge of what it's going to take to get their project done. This is huge. Clients love this. And when you position it as a huge plus, a huge benefit, they really get it. And they're so on board. We should drink wine. I know. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. having a verbose day. My apologies. I know you are. It's a lot of words. Yes. But great energy. So I think it's, we hear all the time, you know, the designer goes in there with the intention of setting all these boundaries, you know, standing in their space. And then the client asks, can we pay you after the work is done? And they've simply let the client negotiate how they work. So Katie says, I'm stressed and feel like I'm always in yes mode to make my clients happy. How do I stop this? You yeah. know, negotiating, that sort of thing. The people pleasing, yes mode, negotiating, all of it, put it down, right? Step into a place of being non negotiable, right? I'm gonna go back to my little restaurant example. We don't walk into McDonald's, right? Simple. We don't walk into McDonald's and say, I'm gonna taste the fries first and then I'm gonna pay you. What I think is appropriate for the amount of fry that you are giving me today. They're like, what? No, right? Like simple, no. We also don't, we just don't walk into a, a business and tell them how to run it. Somehow, somewhere in this crazy world, if we are not really clear on how our business runs and we don't set up the standards around how it's going to go down, clients see an opening. If they see a lack of clarity, they will often propose a method by which it should be done, right? And for some reason, somehow in interior design, this happens a lot. And I think the reason it happens is because there's not that, that ultimate clarity and that ultimate standing in your space of laying down how this business functions from the start. It is one of my favorite things to watch transform inside of um, designers firms. Um, going from, yeah, we're gonna make your house pretty, it's gonna be great, to this is how I work, this is how it's done, this is what's gonna happen, and just that confidence and that clarity and the respect that comes when we go in there not, um, people pleasing and saying yes and being off the cuff and just a wink and a prayer, right? To having confidence and being entrepreneurial. 
and really standing in our space as a business person. The dynamic shifts entirely and you are far, far, far less likely to have someone suggest how you should run your business when you are clearly running a business with intention, on purpose, with standards. Cheers. Damn. Okay. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> so if you are digging this content, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and comment what you're thinking. Yeah, let me know what you're thinking. I would love to hear your questions and keep it coming. So Lee says, charging after the work is done lets me add in any change orders or revisions that come along the way. How do you handle that when charging up front? Lee, we can't be changing things on the fly, scope and, and adding rooms and doing different things. We can't be changing it on the fly, doing all that extra work and then slide it into an invoice and hoping that they're going to pay that without issue. I have been there and I have done that and let me tell you how that went down. I had a client that had a big house doing a big renovation. We're talking 8,000 square feet historic, gorgeous, gutted, people everywhere, workers everywhere, crazy. Timeline was like right this freaking minute, right? Somehow, some way, in my yes mode that I was in, I took my entire seven person design firm off of every other project and dug in on this one. Full bore, full house, it was already gutted, we are designing as fast as humanly possible the entire team on board. And then I sent an invoice. My entire team pulled off of all the other projects, 100% on board for a month. And I used to invoice monthly, hourly. And I sent an invoice. And it was upwards of $40,000 for one month because my entire firm was full force working 50, 60 hours, depending on the employee person, whatever, 40, 50, 60 hours, right? I was working like crazy hours. And the clients flipped their freaking lid. Because when they said 8,000 square feet, already got it, let's go, all on board, yes. And I said, okay, let's do it. Yes, woman was here, right? So excited, big project. That didn't translate to a $40,000 a month roll rate in fees, okay? This is also like, 10, 15 years ago. So maybe right now that's like oh, normal. I don't know. It wasn't at the time. Um, and they flipped. And it was like one of those things where the two decision makers weren't 100% on board with that instruction to go full throttle the way that we had. And there was a lot of hemming and hawing over that bill. We, you know, it's one of those things. Well, are you saying you're not paying it? Oh my God, I just took my team off of every other project to like rescue you because your house is gutted. Like, what are we talking about? Where are we going with this? Can you see how bad this way could get? Right, let me walk you through what it looks like now. You would like increase scope, increase this, more of that, something, something, yada, right? All decision makers in, in all meetings, period, non-negotiable. I will never be sideswiped like that again. Number two, document the increase in scope, the increase in speed, the increase in whatever. Assess a new design fee for it. Put a new addendum to the agreement in place for that additional scope. Outline a new timeline for it because I would never pull my entire team off of all those other gracious, wonderful paying clients to be a yes woman again, mistake made and learned from. Uh, okay. Document it, agreement, new fee, new timeline, right? Scope creep or increased speed or whatever they're asking for is wonderful. It's fine, it's great, it's amazing, right? Getting a new client is hard, right? All the marketing, all the work, closing them, onboarding them, communicating with them, getting them on board, that's hard. So when an, a current client wants more of you, it's A, a huge compliment and B, wonderful. They already know your style, they know your system, they're on board with the communication, they obviously like what they're getting and want more of you. It's all good if you give yourself more time, more fees, an addendum to your agreement, something else, but you've already, I already said it because I was recapping. Get what I'm saying? It is so crazy important not to get caught up in the rush and the excitement and the whatever of it. Slow down. Give yourself the space, the time, and the fees to do it right and oh, the process. You need to start the process over, right? We don't slide 
amazing design in on the fly. We go back to conceptual. We go back to making sure we understand the client's needs. We go back to the process and follow it through each and every step. I'm gonna stop talking now because wine is good. Cheers. Cheers. That was so good and so important. And that one gets me excited. Yeah. <laughs> And I think people feel like if they do certain things, they're going to get cut out of a potential profit, but this is... Listen, if you have to say, I, okay, great, I'm going to go back and create an addendum to the contract, assess a fee, you know, look at my pipeline, look at my capabilities, make sure I can do this properly, and someone says, are you kidding? It has to be done yesterday. We can't. D -d 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 then say goodbye to them because they're gonna have the same crazy reaction when you slide them that $40,000 time bill. Say goodbye to them before you pull your team and you work your ass off and you have this story to tell. Cause it's, uh, can you feel it? That actually happened to me. It was so horrifying, horrifying. So take my lesson, here it is. I give it to you, you don't have to go through it. Yeah. Not at all. So we have our free module, which is all about setting these client expectations up front. And we even talk about payment timelines in that module. All of it. So in our free module, it is literally me walking the potential clients through our design agreements, the important points in our design agreements, all those boundaries, expectations, how to stand in your space, payment timelines, when to get paid, all of it. It is my actual design agreement in this actual presentation. So you can get a really good peek into exactly how I do it after learning all those crazy lessons, right? So yeah, check it out. The free module is literally everything right there. Maybe there. Or there. It might be up there or down there. I don't know. It's going to be somewhere. I'm not in charge of the placing things on the screen. That's all we got for today, folks. That's it. I drink the wine and talk a lot. That's my role. Cheers. I'll see you next time on Design Sips.